Hi there, I'm Sean Dooley and I'm the Product Marketing Manager for ARRI. This is one in a series of Tech Talk videos explaining the features of the Alexa 35. I'm here to tell you about all of our new mechanical support components, so come on over to our new Lightbox table. If you haven't already watched the Alexa 35 Guided Tour video, I'd highly recommend that you do that because it'll give you a nice overview of the whole system. In this video, we're going to go into a lot of detail about the mechanical accessories and the sets that they come in. The Alexa 35 features a new range of completely bespoke camera accessories. And the design process for these accessories was started at the same time as the design process for the camera body. So they are more complementary than ever before. The accessories have been designed around a multitude of ways that we know people operate on set. And then we've broken down these accessories into two discrete kits. So we have the production accessory set and we have the lightweight accessory set. Most of these accessories are interchangeable as well, but this is just the easiest way that we could figure in terms of how we're going to arrange the accessories and sets so that you can purchase them. The production set comes with accessories that we expect to be used by a traditional camera department. So a number of camera assistants and a grip team to help you on set. There are heaps of accessory mounting holes on here, and there's really quick ways to change between steady cam and shooting on sticks, for instance. Whereas the lightweight set, the design philosophy there was really based around having the smallest possible range of accessories that are very lightweight and very easy to change between, say, gimbal operating and shoulder operating in a minimal configuration. All right, so now let's take a look at the production set. So the most noticeable change with the production set is that we have a much longer top handle than we would have found on an Alexa, and it's a little bit wider as well. It has a rounded little grip under here, so it's actually quite comfortable to hold, and I think makes you feel a little more secure than previous designs. It's a full length top handle with a whole heap of accessory mounting points on it, and the cool thing is that you can leave your gimbal mounting plate under the top handle because all of our top handles now for the new camera have a bunch of space here. Then you see this new viewfinder bracket. So the VMB5 is a little novel design that we've come up with where you can have one screw that loosens two hinge points. So now I have a much longer reach here with this viewfinder bracket. It's almost like I have a medium viewfinder extension bracket built into the VMB5. And then over here, we have the same attachment point for the MVF2 as we have on previous Alexa cameras. So if you do need a longer extension, you can still put it here. This is an, also a new little feature, which I think is quite revolutionary. We are no longer using a cylinder. We're using a square tube. So when you undo this to move the viewfinder bracket from side to side, it will no longer fall down. You can also mount the SAS here, the square accessory sleeve, to the back of the top handle. I think the party trick for this whole top half of the camera is that I can quickly remove the whole thing. So if I unplug the hot pluggable viewfinder cable, I then have one screw here, which I can undo with my fingers and no tools, and then quickly remove the whole section from the top of the camera. So that's great if you're going from, say, shooting on sticks to shooting on a steady cam, where you probably don't want to have the viewfinder attached as it only has weight on one side of the camera. Now on top here, this is the low mode support 4, which is the standard top plate in the production set. Again, a whole lot of accessory mounting holes and it's designed so that you can run it as a low mode support if you're using an Artemis or a Steadicam in low mode. At the back, this is an optional top extension bracket, which again gives you more mounting points and is not only secured to the top plate, but also into the back of the camera. So again, it's very secure. On the side, we have these new side brackets. So there is both a CSB1L camera side bracket left over here, which has a rosette for the standard ARRI hand grips and hand grip extensions and a lot of accessory mounting options and the mirrored bracket on the right side of the camera. So this is the CSB1R, again with the rosette and spot for somewhere you can put a rod mounting bracket. We do not have a side bracket with the rod mounting console built in as we did with the Alexa Mini because we think it's more flexible to offer you one that you can put on yourself wherever you like. You can flick it upside down and there are a couple of mounting options. These side brackets and the fact that they mount directly to the camera body have been designed to be as rigid as possible so that when you have a rod in there and lens motors, you have less flex, which will hopefully stop lens motors jumping off the lens. 
There is also a side bracket extension, which we have for the right side only. It is the CSB1R extension bracket, again, with a lot more accessory mounting holes for all sorts of accessories. At the back here, this is a very new type of side bracket. So it is called the articulating mounting plate. And the really nice thing about that is I can quickly flip it up and out of the way. So that means I can mount accessories in places where I previously wouldn't have been able to because they would have blocked the ports. But now I might have a transmitter with a really neat and small SDI cable into the side of the camera. And if I need to move something, I can quickly move it up and out of the way. It's also on this miniature dovetail slider. So again, heaps of range of motion here. I can leave it attached wherever I like. Now, the bottom of the camera might look pretty familiar to you. We again have a compact bridge plate. So this is the third variation of the compact bridge plate, and it's a bit longer than before, so that if you have it on your shoulder, you no longer have perhaps the chance of a bit of metal touching uh, the front of your shoulder. So it is longer, the shoulder pad is further back. And the reason that we have gone with this style again is because we have it all in one piece, and that means the shoulder pad can be closer to the bottom of the camera, so you have a lower center of gravity when you're operating. There are a number of key improvements that we've made with this third generation CBP5 and CBP6. So compared to the one for the Alexa Mini or Mini LF, we support both lightweight 15 rods and studio rods. This is the CBP5 for 19mm studio, and we will also have the CBP6 for 15mm studio rail support available at day one when the camera ships. The plate itself, has the same quick release mechanism that we have for the old CBPs. So it's a three position lever. At the front, it's locked, just like a traditional bridge plate. We then move it back to the middle position where it hits a stopper. And this is where we can slide the whole CBP along a dovetail plate. There are two little ears now, which kind of stick out. Let's see if we can see this little bit just in here, which means that no longer will the camera rock back into the dovetail when you release it. And that means that it slides along the dovetail plate a lot more nicely than we've done in the past. Then if you want to release it completely, you pull out this little extra lever here to the back of the camera, and then I can lift the whole system directly off of a dovetail plate without having to slide it to the back, push the button, pull it out, which can be really tricky if you have long lenses, long heavy lenses. So again, if I put it on, I have to do the same thing. I have to grab the little lever, pull the whole big lever all the way back, and then I can rest it straight onto the dovetail. Let go, it will spring back into the safety locked position. Underneath, we have that dovetail plate, which I mentioned, which is where you can have a whole range of balance options here. So let me spin that around. You have a huge range of balance positions depending on what kind of lens and accessories you have on the front of the camera. And if I come to the front or the back, I can push the safety release button and then take the whole camera out. And this is where you can slide in either two other shoulder pads or our SAM plates, which I'll talk about at the end of this video. As well in the production set, you get Oh, two viewfinder cables. You get an LPL mount with a PL adapter. You get the power distribution module, which is this extra row of connectors here in one of our electronic modules. And you get a B-mount plate that it will, of course, work both on this module and in the back of the camera itself. All right, now let's take a look at the lightweight set. So this is the lightweight set for Alexa 35. Once again, I think the biggest difference is in the top handle. This is the lightweight camera handle, the LCH1. It only weighs 220 grams. The top handle is higher off the deck than the other Alexa handles that we've had before. And once again, there's room in here to leave your gimbal mounting plate, maybe like our Movi adapter plate, in here while you still have the top handle mounted so that when you remove it, it's easy to change setups. The whole top handle here can be quickly released and then moved so that you can get the perfect balance in your hand depending on what kind of lens or accessories you have mounted to the front of the camera. At the back of the top handle, there is also this balance harness adapter BHA1. Now that slips over the handle, you can take it off and then you can slide this independently. Now you could use this to mount a monitor. It's just a 3 8 inch hole on the top there, but it was designed specifically for suspension rigs like the Easy Rig. So this is Easy Rig's quick release chrome ball here and I can adjust the balance position on my Easy Rig without adjusting the position of the top handle and that's 
particularly nice when I have the viewfinder mounted to the top handle. So once again, we're kind of changing that system. So viewfinders go on top handles, mostly with Alexa 35 accessories, so that you have more room up here for lens motors and stuff like that. And there are mounting holes in the front of the LCH, which I've then put an RMB3, which comes with the kit. You could also use this RMB7, and then the viewfinder cross pipe that you will be familiar with from the Alexa Mini. Again, standard fitting here for all the ARRI viewfinder and viewfinder accessories. Now, once again, I can unplug the viewfinder and then quickly remove the lightweight camera handle without any tools. There are these four silver thumb screws, which are very grippy, and they also have a hole for a three mil Allen key inside the screw. So if you did really want to tighten it down, particularly if you're using an easy rig and the weight is taken on the top handle, then you can just do that with a standard hex three key that is included in every set of the Alexa 35. Now on top, it's similar, but this is a different top plate. So this is the UAP3, the universal adapter plate. And ignoring the top extension for a second, this plate is the smallest plate that you can get for an Alexa 35 that still has centered 3 8 and quarter inch holes. It will work on the bottom of the camera as well. So if you need an ultra small and tiny lightweight rig, perhaps for a drone, then running two of these plates would be the way to go. The same top extension bracket here will work with the UAP3 as it does with the LMS4, the top plate for the production set. And again, it just gives you a lot of accessory mounting options, including M4 holes along the side here. On the side of the camera, again, we have these side brackets. And the great thing again about the side brackets is I can remove the top and bottom plates without first taking off the side brackets. So we have lots of accessory mounting holes here. We have the CSB1R extension and RMB7, but we do not have the AMP1 articulated mounting plate with the lightweight accessories. Same left side bracket here with rosette, hand grip mounting, all of that good stuff. Now on the bottom, we're still using the same dovetail interface that we have built into the bottom of the Alexa 35 thanks to this Bud 1, the balanced utility dovetail plate. And that's a plate that should just live on the Alexa 35 all the time. We have a little lever here for quickly releasing the shoulder pad so that you can slide it back and forward. Now that is a huge range of motion available for balancing. And of course, it can come straight off. But before I do that, I'll talk about the BPA6, the bridge plate adapter. So the bridge plate adapter includes lightweight 15 mil rods here at the front with individual clamps so you can run one rod. And the new part is this plate at the bottom. So this is actually a touch and go 35 plate, which works with many accessories, including a Euro plate. So I can just drop this straight in and it's basically like having a snap plate for a tripod permanently mounted to the camera. So it's much harder to lose. And also because it's mounted with four screws, it's going to be less prone to twisting like you might have with some other snap plates. Now this can be removed with those four screws and then underneath is the interface for a traditional BP-8 or BP-9 bridge plate. So if you have a lot of those in your rental house or you wanna use the traditional system, then you can just attach the BP-8 or BP-9. This whole system can slide off, of course, for other shoulder pads and bridge plates and sand plates, like so, with this little blue release button. And then we have a second shoulder pad. So this is the CSP2, compact shoulder pad number two, and it slides in here. Now, this is the lightest and smallest way to run a shoulder pad on the Alexa 35. It's nice and thin, and it has this squishy, comfortable visco rubber shoulder pad here, which is good and designed so that you can have the lowest possible center of gravity on top of your shoulder. I really like this plate. It's my favorite shoulder pad for the Alexa 35. And it kind of reminds me of how we used to run 16 mil cameras that also had a flat base like the SR3. There are four little feet, so you can mount this on a table. No worries. Another accessory that comes with the lightweight camera set is this rod console. So this is the LWS6, and it is a lightweight rod console for 15 mil rods that will mount to the UAP3. And then you have an optically centered pair of lightweight 15 mil rods so that you can run lens motors or the standard MVB1 viewfinder mounting bracket that you would find on an Alexa Mini. And you could actually undersling a matte box as well, again, because it is optically centered. 
you can run the lightweight camera handle directly onto the camera body, so you don't have to run the top plates. And if you do that, you can still use the LWS6, as that will mount just in here to these two holes. And of course, if you are running the lightweight camera handle backwards, then you can also mount the lightweight console to the rear of the handle as well. The lightweight set doesn't come with any electronic modules like the production set does, but personally, I think it's a great fit with the AEM1, the audio extension module. That's basically a two-channel microphone preamp you can attach directly to the back of the camera in a very nice integrated way. The lightweight set does come with a B-mount adapter, a power cable, two viewfinder cables, and an LPL lens mount with PL to LPL adapter. You may have noticed that a lot of the components from the production set and from the lightweight set are interchangeable with one another. For instance, you might like to purchase a lightweight set and also purchase a compact bridge plate. Or maybe you have the production set and you'd like to pick up a UAP3 for really small rigging possibilities. You can certainly buy all of the components individually, but we are also coming out with expansion sets. So if you've purchased a lightweight set, you can choose to purchase either the Production 15 expansion set or the Production 19 expansion set to give you all of the parts that you didn't receive in your lightweight camera set. If you've purchased a production set, then you can choose to purchase the lightweight expansion set, which will give you all the parts in the lightweight set that you didn't get with your production set. There are also a whole bunch of other accessories designed specifically for the Alexa 35, such as the stabilizer adapter mounts. So this is the SAM5, which is designed for Movi Pro and Movi 15 and slides directly into the bottom of the camera in place of a shoulder pad. So you can very quickly change without tools from this kind of package into a gimbal. The SAM6 has been designed for the ARRI Artemis 2, the ARRI Trinity and Trinity 2, and the ARRI Stabilized Remote Head SRH3 and SRH360. The SAM7 has been designed primarily for the ARRI Artemis 1 and also for GPI Pro rigs. The SAM8 has been designed for Tiffin Steadicams such as the M1 and M2. And the SAM9 is designed for the Ronin 2 gimbal. We will also have a range of vertical adapters so that you can run the camera in 9x16 or portrait mode. And there will be a metal flight case available which will fit both the production and the lightweight set built straight into it. Lastly, there are a bunch of power accessory plates, but we'll talk about those in the next Tech Talk, which is all about electronic accessories, including how to power the camera, battery mounting options, the electronic modules, and the camera companion app. All right, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much for watching.